So hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us for this special live session. I'm Itzik Amiel, and we are here with a weekly Switch interview series, Switch It On, where we talk with smart and talented people about how can you switch on your practice and your life, and you are invited to join us. But before I start, I want to share again my support to the people of Ukraine. I know it's coming every week. Unfortunately, this war going on. And to all those people, the friends, the colleagues, the lawyers that I know for so many years going there, uh, you know, it's not, it's great to think, it's great to pray, it's great to be there for everybody, but I don't think it's enough. I can, I asking each one of you to really join us, to find, to do something that you can help today people there that actually change their life because of the horrible war and do something. It's not about nationality, race, color, religion. We are all human and I think we all need to stick together against war in our world. So please support with that. And I hope you will not forget that, that other people, when we are doing our own routine, other people there are suffering. So today we're going to talk about very important subject of day, leadership in complex times, as you saw. And so I want you to feel free uh, first to put in the chat box, if you're joining us, and a lot of you joining us, and I'm happy about it because I think we have amazing Great session in front of us. So if you're joining us now, please put your comments in the chat box. It's very important that we'll be able to know who you are and also give you some stage to ask your question later on. So in the chat box, put your name, where you're dialing from, so we'll be able to see. I have the honor to have this live session today with a true leadership expert. Today, my special guest is Jean Van Hoogharden. And I hope I pronounce his name right. He's soon going to correct me, I'm sure. But if I invite Jean to join us, Let me give you some highlight about him, about Jean. Uh, Jean is a junk professor of practice at Astridge Holt Business School, and he's responsible for design and delivery of international executive programs and for the leadership and leading global syllabus on UG, MBA, and EMBA programs. Jean has penned the book about social dynamic in large organization, and he's also visiting professor as LBS, Valerie Klug School of Management, AHCUST. Jean has consulted for numerous firms in Europe and a thought executive courses in North and Latin America, Europe, Singapore, South Africa, Australia, Middle East and Far East, almost all over the world. And you know, I always bring you amazing human beings, amazing people. Jean is also visiting professor at Falco School of Business at Duke University and also teaches at London Business School Velvet Business School at Ghent and the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. His interests are linking the strategic aspects to the softer area in business. His business and academic experience is situated as human resources management in the European Business Unit of Honeywell and Management Development Manager and Honeywell European Headquarters. Ja has a master degree in organizational and personal psychology and has followed courses at Thunderbird, Harvard University, and Attack School of Business. And I can say more and more and more. You don't want to read the resume. You can read it soon. So without further ado, I want to invite John to join us. So welcome, John, and thank you very, very much. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Awesome. Great to have you. Thanks for your time and, and agreeing to be with us and share your knowledge with our international audience. And I see people joining us. So those who are joining us, please, 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 Put your name and where you're dialing from because I want John to see who you are. And soon you'll be able to ask him as well questions. So to set our conversation, John, to our discussion, and as we, I said before, the, the session I want to dedicate today is for the important subject of leadership in complex times. Oh, how do current times influence leadership globally and also specifically in the professional services? So those of you joining us from the professional services industry, Because in this vol uh, volatile time, leaders in the professional industry cannot think gener generally about change. In fact, leaders do not face a single generic change, but rather a multitude, multitude of global and unexpected and maybe multivariable changes that demand a new form of leadership. So how can leaders and professional practice develop their skills to have a positive impact on organizations? Because in today's complex times, leadership becomes more and more important. Now, here's the truth. In a simple world, 
perhaps unilateral power held by a single smart capable leader could rule the day but in a complex times as we will explore of course in this session together with John it takes a collective sharing of power creativity perspective to become agile and and, and nuance enough to lead into the uncertain future so in this session we'll discuss that uh, what are those some of the characteristics I think and behaviors of leaders who To thrive in today's world and with Jean help to discover what are some of the new attitude or of you want or skills or ideas or insights leaders in the professional industry and other industries need to develop already starting from today and I hope I, I, I give some overview and I know Jean will come much more deeper and John you know when I start the session I always like to do something very special I call it 10 in one but okay. I ask you 10 very short question in one minute. I know we didn't prepare for that and I encourage also our audience to listen to us also to type in the chat if they want to answer their question to the same question I'm going to ask you and that to take us about a minute okay so if you're ready okay, that's good that's good normally I ask the questions but it's good to be on the other <laughs> side where uh, somebody else asks me the questions yeah awesome so then if you're ready then I will start I'm so ready can start with the first one and let me just mute here so it will not the ticker will not be You stab us I could show the people so here we go the first one leadership in complex time requires different leaders and skills different leaders same skills or same skills different leaders different leaders with, with uh, different skills or same leaders with different skills but the different skills is the important great that was a tricky question I see number two um, in leadership in Is, is leadership is com- in complex times had direct influence of the culture of the firm or organization directly indirectly or not in all cases directly directly great number three businesses like people need to adapt and overcome challenges whenever they are presented is it true false or not always true great that's fast number five four sorry is empathy a must trait for leaders in complex times for sure? Not really or not in complex times. For sure. Absolutely great. I'm happy we agree about that. Number five, who are better leaders in complex times? Women, men or too sensitive to answer? Too sensitive to answer. Yeah. <laughs> I gave you a escape route. I know. I also am not there to answer that one. Number six, is technology allowing us to make leaders more ready for complex times? Less ready or no effect at all? In principle more ready yeah okay I'm happy to say in principle because there's probably no answers to that number seven good leaders develop appropriate strategies for their organization in peers of crisis or stability alike agree or disagree agree great number eight the ability to question the way things are done in the is vital to good leaders spot on not sure or totally BS spot on awesome. Number nine, how much do we need inspirational leader in complex times? Very, not at all, or depends? Very. Right. Number 10, are the principle of leadership, and the last one, are the principle of leadership is compl- in complex times applied the, to only the leaders of the organization or to everybody? Some of the things to everybody, actually, yeah. Great. So that's what the 10 was very fast. I mean, you were very smooth. You know your answer. So you see, that's an exit. No doubts in the heart. And I know some of them were tricky, John, so I'm sorry for that. But that's what saved the text for our next question and our interaction. I just want to say hello to people joining us here, David and Alex and Diana and Raul. I mean, all of you joining, just type, type your name in the chat box. Let us know who you are, where you're coming from. So we would like you to be engaged with us in the conversation. So we know you are here with us, but just type in the chat your name, where you're coming from. So the first thing I want to know from you, John, is... Uh, and I think it's fundamental question is why is leadership becoming more and important in these complex times? Yeah, I think you hinted at that in your introduction, it's a, but I think what we see nowadays is that uh, the complexity comes quite a lot from the change. And I think that, uh, of course, people sometimes challenge me and they say, yeah, Jean, but there has always been change. And it's true. I have a 93 year old mother and if I would ask her what has changed in her lifetime that's also huge but I think it didn't go as fast as it goes now 
Yeah. So that is that is one reason. The other reason is that there is more and more uncertainty. Yeah. I mean, I know that leadership professors use a lot of, and also strategy professors use the VUCA world. Yeah. Volatile, uncertain, complex, and uh, ambiguous. But for me, that really hit home when COVID happened, because that was a situation in the whole world that nobody had experienced before. And therefore, there was a lot of uh, uncertainty that nobody has ever seen uh, before. And I think that is one of the biggest reasons why leadership is more needed. So the old ways of solving uh, puzzles, yeah, is over. I always make the difference uh, with a puzzle, there is one answer. With a problem, there's more answers. Yeah, with a puzzle, it's black or white. Uh, sorry, with a puzzle, it's black or white. Yeah? And with a problem, it's shades of gray, 50 or more. But the thing is that uh, that is, I think, making a switch in uh, people's mindset. And that goes much more with leadership, living with that uh, judgment more than decision about what, uh, what to do. So almost if you're listening to you, so actually what you're saying is in the past where people's leaders will take us from the known to the unknown or maybe to uh, known to the known, which is much easier. Now it's actually what you're saying. We have to take it from the unknown to the unknown. Unknown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very distorted because of this. Nobody nobody knew. And you could also see that. I mean, it's very dependent on the countries. But you could also see that in in the COVID times, where experts certainly here in Belgium on television had different views than politics had other views and so on. And that is because people didn't have an answer. Yeah. And I think that is more and more what's going to happen. We don't know. I I love your support for Ukraine. We don't know what the actually consequence of that will be on the rest of the world. So there's Technology is a more general one. We don't know actually what will be the consequence. So there's a lot of un- uncertainty, and that's I think why uh, why leadership is becoming more important. Yeah. But I heard some certainty because there probably will be uh, consequences. We just don't know yeah. what they are. What it is? Yeah. Some yeah. certainty there. So interesting enough. Um, you know, those who are joining us now, I see people still joining. Please again type your name in the, in the chat box, and of course, uh, I encourage all of you if you have a question during the conversation, Jean. Please type it as well in the chat and ask them that instead of my question. So as long as you don't ask questions, I'll continue with my question to ask for Jean. I think there's a lot. So I'm here for those who are joining us with Jean van Hoogwaard and we're talking about leadership in complex time. So Jean, let me ask you a question. I think many of our viewers probably asking themselves whether firms that working or company organization, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but what are some of the... Um, if you say characteristics of successful leadership, especially in complex times? Yeah, I mean, and they, they of course, are situated on, on different levels, I think. But mm-hmm. I think one of the basic things is, and again, you hinted at that, is um, yeah, being humble as a leader because there are no answers anymore uh, or straightforward answers. So we're in the older days, the leader was supposed to have the right answers. I think nowadays it's realizing yourself, no, it's not anymore about me. It's really about helping people to come up with answers. So that is what some people call humble leadership. I think that is, that is, that is actually a good description. And that goes together with another crucial thing in leadership nowadays, which is Curiosity, yeah. I mean, I, I Harvard did recently a research in digital transformation. What are some of the, the the characteristics of leaders? One was adaptability, one was creativity, but the other one was definitely curiosity. Allowing yourself to uh, not know the answer, but be curious in finding out what the answer is. And I know that Carol Dweck has called that uh, a growth mindset, which has a lot to do with that. Is that you always want to learn uh, because the world is changing so uh, so quickly. So curiosity, humble, uh, wanting to learn. Also, I think uh, don't want to do it all yourself, which goes together with that uh, being humble. I think sometimes people in your organization might have the answers, yeah, and therefore including them. And, and you see that a lot also in... Uh, in marketing uh, 
uncertainties where people are trying to go to markets that they don't know. Mm -hmm. And instead of trying to find the answers themselves, they mm -hmm. should have probably have more benefit by including younger people, if that is your audience and, and so on. So I think don't do it all yourselves. Yeah. Uh, surround yourself with the right people and delegate. And then I think the last one, which I stole this when I was at the Harvard University working with Ronnie Heifetz and Linsky, is to get on the balcony from time to time. I mean, most leaders that I know, they are very action-oriented, and therefore they go from action to action. But with all that is happening in the world, getting at a higher stage uh, on the balcony or take a helicopter view is something that is really, really important so that you really can understand what is happening and, and what you could do to, uh, to help the situation or the people in the situation. Great. And you talk about, I mean, in interesting, you talk about curiosity, being humble, eagerness to learn. I mean, I call in my book Attentional Leadership, which is exactly, yeah. I mean, the same thing, same thing, exactly what, you know, this combination of a lot of things we talked in the past, but actually deserve a new stage, a new place, and not everybody will fit in the sort of leadership in the past have those traits, you know, yeah. what you're talking about. So I see a lot of curious, humble, eagle, and then people joining us, and they're not showing the face, not telling us who they are. So if you don't tell who you are, we will not know. If you have questions for John, please type it in the chat, because I will be able to ask him live, and you're going to get answer to your question. And um, so I want to say hi to those who are there. Uh, David from Uruguay, Anonym from Zimbabwe. I see Nigeria. We have UK, United States, Canada. We have people from the world coming. I'm here with John. Van Hoogewaard and speaking on leadership in complex time. Interesting subject to a lot of you. And, and let me correct a lot of you because a lot of you going to all kind of weekend or retreat about leadership. You know, you cannot learn in one little course about leadership. I mean, that's a subject you always have to learn from experts like Jean because there's so many development and so many things you cannot capture and become a leader in a weekend. I mean, it's impossible. So if any of you were learning in a weekend, it just illusion so i'm saying no, a lot of it to those you go ahead but the good news the good news it's a case that it can be learned yeah i think Absolutely. that is that i very often make the link uh, between uh, parenting yeah because parenting has a lot to do with uh, with leadership and we don't go to courses to become a good parent neither i mean people in the us probably do because they haven't the seven steps to become an effective daddy but most people don't normally go to courses. You learn it by trial and error, by looking at what your parents did and do exactly the same or exactly the opposite. And you might read a book about it. And I think leadership is a little bit the same. You learn it by practicing, but by reflecting on that practice, by having a mentor and a coach, and perhaps go on what you call the weekend programs on, mm -hmm. on leadership. But it's also in rank order of importance on how you develop your leadership. So... I'm very humble myself in what difference I can make in programs in the development of leaders, yeah. And I, I think it's an interesting observation, Meg, because I think there's nobody we're talking now listening to us that one day in his career said, one day I'll be a leader. I mean, that's not something you were aiming at. Sometimes are falling into your life and you have to de devote and learn it. And the second, I think there's not certain time or moment of time of your life that you become a leader. It's not that you wake up one morning and say, today no, I become no. a leader. <laughs> Exactly. So that's why it's so important to learn it consistently and constantly because you're always leading something. If it's not the group or organization, maybe you're leading your family, whatever, or leading yourself. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, again, if you have questions, please put it in the chat box for Jean that we can ask him and, uh, and get more knowledge for the things that he is uh, having so much experience with. I mean, of course, if you want to learn more about Jean, but he's doing his work, I would suggest very warmly because we're not going to finalize everything today but all the questions I have for him. So I would suggest definitely connect with LinkedIn or go to his uh, website, globecon.biz. You see it on the screen. So there you can see, find more information, how to connect with Jean, how to talk to him more, maybe engage him in other conversation or helping your organization or anything. So please feel free to do that. If you want to make sure that you never miss one of our bi-weekly switch on interview series, again, follow up on LinkedIn or the Switch Hub website. Go there, sign up, get the business development strategies and tips but also you'll be added to a list where you get a regular reminders about our fantastic guests like Jean. So you know it in advance. You don't wait till the last moment. We're not going to surprise you. So Jean, let's talk about the connection. I know you are very much into that subject between culture, 
and leadership. And yeah. so what is your intake on are there any cultural differences in what people expect from leaders, especially in complex times? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, and I know that you had other speakers like my good friend von Strompenaer on this subject, but, but I know that there are indeed differences. And, and for instance, and this is the interesting one, in certain, in certain cultures, um, there is a more, how would I say, uh, expectation of the leader that he or she has the answers. And of course, that goes a little bit against to what I just said. So in these cultures, it probably will be actually longer before that will happen. Yeah, And I will always remember also, and, and unfortunately, it's not a joke, I was once asked to do a two-day leadership in St. Petersburg for the Russian railways. Yeah, And, uh, okay, these are all government officials. And I think that um, what struck me at a certain moment, I, I asked this question, which I ask a lot, who is a leader that you admire? And they literally all stood up uh, and say, Vladimir Putin. Yeah. So that is a good example of where yeah, there is so much dependency in that culture. And partly, of course, also in this case by, by Putin on where people become dependent on, on the leader and in certain cultures, that is more than in others, yeah? So that not knowing or admitting that you don't know doesn't come natural in, in certain uh, cultures. The other one that, that you mentioned in one of your questions was inspiration. Inspiration means different things in different cultures. I remember working with a very international organization, and this was the first time that you had a mix of different cultures. But the first time also that a lot of Americans would be exposed to the CEO, and the CEO was Swedish, and rather very stereotypical Swedish, so not showing a lot of emotion, just sitting down and talking. And I, I remember in the bar that night later on that these Americans were really, I would I say, uh, yeah, they said literally words like disappointed because they didn't find him inspirational, while for the Swedish uh, people who were in the group, this was absolutely normal. So the, the, there is there is a difference that you cannot deny. And I don't say that, therefore, in some of these more autocratic cultures or hierarchical cultures, people can't delegate. But you will have to do that in a different way. You will have to be more explicit about how do you get people on board in these less inspirational, showing inspirational cultures. So I think it is influence, but there's always... It takes a long time, a way to, uh, to deal with that in these new uh, leadership uh, elements that are needed here. And again, it's a very interesting what you're saying, is especially the interaction between leadership and culture, because actually, if you allow me to ask you as another little question is, so you're saying that it's harder also to go and influence those people that culture prevent them or adoring this figure. Because if you want to solve it, they want to interfere, that you want to insert a different knowledge or a different uh, insight, it's very hard because you have a culture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, problem. of course, I, would, I wouldn't do that in, in a situation like this is, by the way, <clears throat> this is around eight or nine years ago with the Russian railways. But, but I think it, it's not up, up for people like me to change that. But I, I always hope that I can hold a mirror to them to see what happens in other in other cultures with leaders yeah and and what can they take away from that that fits in their culture more than go out and and preach a certain kind of leadership because most it's also an interesting one but we, we could talk for hours about that one yeah. most leadership research is done in the anglo-saxon world yeah? yeah so a lot of the research and all the things that i talk about are, of course, done in these Anglo-Saxon countries where there is a less hierarchical view on leadership anyway. So you always have to, to see when you put some of these ideas in another culture that you might have to adapt and that you might have to see what can they really learn and what can they take away. Yeah. Great. I mean, uh, those of you joining us now, it's not too late. I mean, stay with us. We are still in conversation. I'm here with Jean van Hoge, Harden. He's speaking on leadership in complex time. And you can see they're talking to an expert, you know. I was telling you many times, telling you, how do you know expert? Experts have stories. They're in the trenches. Other ones don't have. You hear the stories that 
John Chang with us and see all those interesting points about leadership and culture and understanding more the variety of forces are playing when you talk about leadership in complex time. Again, if you have questions for Jean, because we're still in conversation, you are very, very welcome to ask it. Type it in the chat and ask it. If not, I continue asking questions till the time we'll be finished, and it's very soon. So I encourage you to ask it now before I run out of question or the time is running out. So with that, Jean, let me go for the next question for you. And I'm waiting for you to ask questions and introduce himself. But, you know, I want you to help us out because we like to give very much practical advice to our community internationally, the global professional community, and not just theoretical discussion. So what are some of the maybe biggest challenges for leaders nowadays? And maybe if you have some suggested solutions. Yeah. So I think that, first of all, it's, uh, <clears throat> which is easier said than done, and certainly in certain yeah. professional services, uh, I mean, if, if you think about lawyers, they get paid to solve puzzles, yeah? So it's, it's actually a big challenge to get away from that mindset and in the area of how do they lead their people, start to think about there are not one right answer. In leadership, it's very often, the right answer is very often, I know that for lawyers that's also very often the case, but the leadership answer is very often, it depends. So moving mm -hmm. away from that thinking in terms of the one solution to, no, there are plenty of solutions and, and it's problems instead of puzzles, that's one, goes together with the willingness, actually, to learn, yeah, to, to say, okay, although in my profession, I probably get paid for the things I know, but in leadership, it's also about not knowing <clears throat> what, I mean, not knowing things and, and, allow yourself to be curious as I already said before and uh, and to learn and then I, the other last one I think is is a very personal one for leaders is that they have to realize that it's not about them yeah I think uh, people are all very in leadership roles are one of the reasons why people get in leadership roles is of course they get a lot of attention and that's a positive as such but attention is a little bit like a drug, yeah? And the more you get it, the more you want it. And I think dealing with that addiction, if I exaggerate for effect, that I think something that people have to realize, it's not about us, it's about the people we are, we are leading. Which, of course, if you are in a job where you get recognized for your expertise, it's really going in a different mindset completely. Exactly. And that's why it's not about attention getting, but attention giving. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Attention switch. But, you know, I, I, there's something interesting that you're saying, because you said leaders, you know, the uncertainty, etc. But if compared to entrepreneurship, the uncertainty is one of the best blessings of entrepreneurship, because you don't yeah. want to know what's happening. The unknown is, is the drive to get, yeah. to, you know, create your future. And, and I hear you talk about leadership. It sounds like more than a drive. It sounds like more like a challenge. Like in yeah, I think with, with entrepreneurs, of course, it's very often their idea that they want to implement. So they have, which because that puts later on another problem, they, they have the control. Yeah, that, that's one. In, mm -hmm. I, did, I did some work with family owned businesses. At a certain moment, a company grows away from the original entrepreneur who started it. And then, of course, management starts to creep in. Yeah. So there is a lot of what, like challenging the way things get done, which was one of your 10 questions also. There's a lot of things that entrepreneurs do which are linked to leadership, but there are also some differences, certainly if we think about leadership in big, big organizations, yeah. Great. And I think a lot of the people listening to us is exactly in that situation. They were a small firm. They were maybe yeah. by themselves. Suddenly they grew up, joined a bigger firm. And then again, the different challenges and leadership if you take a leadership firm when before you were alone of course is much more difficult and you need to learn new skills new insight new ideas as john said before just look at the data copy it paste it first before you try to invent it yourself it's much easier much faster so uh, i mean we're almost at the end of the conversation john so summarize this great session with you i wonder i found a quote by uh, ralph waldo emerson who said do not follow where the path may lead go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. And I think that yeah, sounds yeah, more yeah, when yeah. you don't know where to go. <laughs> and, and then later on, you're in the history. So I think that for those of you who are joining, you didn't ask questions. Now it's the last time because before I'm ending the conversation, if you have any question, now it's the time to ask it. 
But in any case, those of you who are listening to us, we want you to take action, implement at least one thing you heard today from John. And, and if you want to connect with John, as I mentioned before, do it via LinkedIn or go connect via his website. And again, I will share it with everybody. It's globecon.biz. There you can find more information, more stuff that John doing, all the interesting stuff, and definitely connect and learn more. It's never too late to learn if you want to engage and learn about leadership or do better things in your organization, your firm. So we've been here with Jan van Hochwarden. He is an expert and lecturer on leadership, as I mentioned. Again, you learn more about Jan from his website and LinkedIn. And for now, what left is to thank you, Jan, for... You're welcome. You're That's welcome. That's the only question to ask you, but, you know, the time is already over. So thank you very, very much for that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. And we want to thank each one of you uh, for joining us, John and myself. I think it's if there, you lost the chance to ask questions, but you can connect with John and ask him directly. See you, everyone, next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Central European time, 12 p.m. Eastern time, 9 a.m. Pacific time. And remember, it's never, never too late to switch it on. Bye, everybody, for now. <laughs>